When business goes badly, companies must take action. And sometimes that action can be drastic. In 2012, the parent company of Payless Shoe Source and Keds was split in a $1.3 billion buyout. Keds was originally founded by U.S. Rubber to create sneakers or quiet shoes. Later, U.S. Rubber bought a five-year-old shoe startup called Sperry Top Cider. Sperry and Keds were then purchased by Stride Right to create the Stride Right Corporation. Stride Right bought Saucony, the maker of high-end running shoes. And then Stride Right was purchased by discount shoe company Payless. This acquisition created a parent company called Collective Brands, which went through a corporate restructuring after just five years because of miserable performance. Payless went to two private equity firms, while the other brands were purchased by Wolverine Worldwide, the maker of Hush Puppies. Sometimes restructuring, such as the collective brand's spin-off, can be the consequence of failed acquisitions, but it can also happen because of external events or changes within the company. The three types of restructuring strategies are downsizing, downscoping, and leveraged buyouts. Downsizing is just what it sounds like. The company tries to get smaller in order to save on cost while still providing the same products. Companies typically downsize to save money on payroll and other expenses, or they simply find an opportunity to become more efficient. I'm always interested in watching recent layoffs. My favorite website for that is dailyjobcuts.com. They collect both possible and planned job cuts in addition to significant closures and new hirings. As the 22 real estate market slowed, companies like Realtor.com, Redfin, and mortgage providers like JP Morgan and Wells Fargo announced big layoffs to make their companies smaller and more efficient. With people going back to regular gym memberships, Peloton also announced some big layoffs. These companies needed to save money because they knew that the volume of work was going down due to changes in their customers' behavior. However, while downsizing can have some short-term cost-saving benefits, it can harm employee morale of those employees that remain, and it can also harm long-term performance because you lost some of the good employees that you had. The result is that short-term cost savings can lead to poor performance long-term. Downscoping sounds a lot like downsizing, but it focuses on eliminating product lines and business units rather than simply getting smaller. A common method of downscoping is a spin-off, where part of a company is sold to outside investors or to a different company. Downscoping helps a firm to focus on its core business where it can be most effective, and this can help with long-term performance. Downscoping can be a response to companies that get too diversified. The goal of downscoping is to become less diversified and thus more focused. The zenofinvesting.com tracks spin-off announcements. I don't know how you feel about following announcements like this, but it's fascinating to me. 3M is spinning off part of its healthcare business. Kellogg is spinning its North American cereal unit. General Electric is splitting into separate units to focus on aerospace, healthcare, and power as distinct businesses, even though they are keeping the units under one corporate umbrella. And finally, leveraged buyouts. In a buyout, the company is purchased by an outside group generally to take the company private. Leveraged buyouts are often financed by debt, and then after the deal is closed, the company may sell off assets to reduce that debt. Attractive buyout targets are generally struggling companies that outside investors view as opportunities to turn around. A buyout can help correct for bad management, and it gives the opportunity for the company to refocus its strategy and improve. Vista Equity Partners and Elliott Management are working on a deal to purchase the software company Citrix. The financing of the deal is through debt, but the acquiring companies are struggling to raise the funds in the form of bonds and loans because of the ongoing risks associated with the deal. It's risky, but they hope it will pay off. Because acquisitions often precede corporate restructuring, there are a few things that companies should consider when making those acquisitions in the first place. I talk about the benefits and potential risks of acquisitions in other videos, which you can find in the description, but successful acquisitions do have a few notable characteristics. Effective acquisitions that do not lead to corporate restructuring should involve complementary resources and capabilities, involve careful due diligence and be made on friendly terms, and maintain financial slack so the company can focus on innovation and ongoing improvements. 
I want you to find an example of restructuring, preferably in your industry. What happened? Was it downsizing, downscoping, or a leveraged buyout? And what happened prior to restructuring that made the changes necessary? Thanks for joining today. I hope you found this video to be valuable. Have a wonderful day. Take care.